Good morning, today's lesson is 2.7. Today we're gonna to divide fractions. Our essential question, how do you divide fractions? Let's unlock the problem. Toby and his dad are building a dog house. They need to cut a board that is two thirds yard long into one six yard pieces. How many one six yard pieces can they cut? Well, one way is you can divide two thirds divided by one sixth using the number line. Draw a number line and shade it to represent the total length of the board. So think. David, divide a whole number into thirds. Toby and his dad have two-thirds of a yard, so the shade is two-thirds. So I'm going to divide these into thirds, so there's one-third, two-thirds. Step two is show a fraction that represents the parts or pieces of the board, which was one-sixth. So we have one-sixth, and then let's, we've got one-sixth, one-sixth, and one-sixth. So there would be four one-sixth yard pieces in two-thirds. So again, here's one-third and two-thirds, and then I divided them up into sixth. One, two, three, four. So there are four one-sixth and two-thirds yard. Another way is to divide two-thirds divided by one-sixth using a common denominator. So think, six is a multiple of three and six, so six is a common denominator. In order to make our denominators the same, so we have two-thirds divided by one-sixth. So if I take these two-thirds, so I'm going to put it right here, what do I need to multiply the bottom number by to make it be six? And what I need to multiply it by is two over two, right? Then one-sixth, so now it's divided by one-sixth, so now I'm using this one-sixth. In order to make the six be the bottom, I have to do nothing because it's already there, right? So two, so if we're doing this, this is two times two, which is four, and then three times two, which is six, which is right here. So then now my new problem is this problem right here. I know that's kind of messy. I probably would have written it different. I think I would have done this. Two thirds divided by one sixth. I know that's gonna be the same, so I would wanna just change this one. So then I do it two over two here, which would give me the four sixth, and then I could just kind of scratch that out, because this looks a little complicated. But it's not, it's the same thing that we've been doing when we were doing multiplication. So now I have four six divided by one sixth, and four six divided by one sixth. Um, so if you think, there are four groups of one sixth and four six. So two thirds divided by one six is four. And Toby and his dad cut four one it sixth yard. Okay, personally, this is my favorite way of doing it, and I know parents will probably recognize this as well, is when I was taught to divide, um, we used reciprocals um, and inverse operation to divide the fractions. So two numbers whose product are reciprocals or multiple inverses. So for example, two-thirds times three halves equals one. So two-thirds and three halves are reciprocals. They're the opposite, because I'm swapping, right? I'm making the reciprocal. I'm not sure if this was in fifth grade standard. I think we touched it on it just a little bit last year, but it wasn't um, a major standard, but it is definitely an option to use. So activity, find a pattern. So complete the table by finding the products. How are each pair of the division and multiplication problems the same and how are they different? Well, first let's complete them. So my dividing, I have four sevenths divided by two sevenths, which equals two. And on multiplication, remember I'm using the inverse here, so I have four sevenths, there's my four sevenths, times seven over two. So I switch this, see? I did the inverse. So on this one, when I'm dividing, it's two over seven, but when I'm multiplying, it's seven over two. Okay, you could do the little cross multiplication if it makes it easier for you, you know? Um, but essentially, you get two, because four times seven is 28, um, seven times two is 14, 28, 14, and 14 goes into 28 two times. And then over here, same thing. So we have 5, 6, right? There's my 5, 6. On this one, it's divided by 4, 6. But over here, I do the inverse, which is multiplying by 6 fourths. I get 5 fourths. And guess what? I'm going to get the same thing here. I'm going to get 5 fourths. Okay? And that's because 6 times 5 is 30. 6 times 4 is um is 24 and then I know that 6 can go into 
30 five times and six can go into four um, four times you can also do the cross canceling like we did before so I can cross these sixes out and make them both be ones so now I have five and four so sometimes it's easier to do it that way again we're gonna do the same thing one third divided by five nines is the same thing as one third times nine over five you're still gonna get three fifths okay so how are each pair of division and multiplication the same and how are they different well, if you rewrite the division as a multiplication by, by the reciprocal of the divisor, you're going to get the same answer. Um, it's just a little easier to visualize for some people. How do you use the pattern in the table to rewrite the, the division problem involving fractions as a multiplication problem? Well, first, the fraction and the answer in each pair are the same, right? So we have our, our fractions the same. And then the second fraction in each pair is the reciprocal of each other. So this first one, we always keep the same. But then the second one, we do the reciprocal, the opposite. So if it's 5 ninths, we're going to make it 9 fifths. If it's 1 third, we're going to make it 3 over 1, right? That second number. And then you just multiply straight across. It's a pretty simple way to do it. So in this next example, Winnie needs a piece of string for a craft project. How many 1 12th yard pieces of string can she cut from a piece that is 3 quarters inch long? So if you want to get an idea of where you're at, estimating always tends to work. So we have 3 quarters which is 1, it's closer to 1, right? And then we have divided by 1 12th, which when you divide that, you're going to get 12, right? So if you want to use the reciprocal, and I can do the reciprocal on this one too if you want, so you don't have to visualize it. So if I have 1 divided by 1 12th, it's, remember we always put our 1 underneath. So if I do that, then I'm going to use the reciprocal of this, so I'm going to have 1 over 1 times, because whenever you change this to a times, then you make this reciprocal, 12 over 1, and we get 12 over 1, which is the same thing as 12. So now, using the reciprocal of the divisor, we're going to write a multiplication problem. So the original problem is 3 quarters divided by 1 12th. So if we take this number right here, we've got our 3 quarters, and now we're going to write the reciprocal, 12 over 1. We have our problem written down here, 3 quarters times 12 over 1. Much easier to cross um, cancel, just because you get you don't have to simplify in the end. So I know 4 can go into 12. Um, 4 goes into one, 4 one time, and 4 goes into 12 three times. So now I have 3 times 3, which is 9. And I have 1 times 1, which is 1. So my answer is going to be 9 on that one, right? And 1 12th times 9 equals 9 over 12, which is 3 quarters. And that's how we check our answer. We do the opposite, right? Because since the estimate was 12, when he can cut nine one twelfths piece of string, it's reasonable because it's really close. Okay, on these problems, I just want to do a couple of them for you, and I'm going to do them with the inverse. I know there's the number line here. If that works for you, great. Um, if visualizing it works for you, great. On the using the fraction tiles, that's fine. Um, if you do want to use the inverse, I don't know that I did it as well as I should or as much as I should, so I'm just going to do a few more of these problems. So let's do number five. Again, whenever I have a whole number, I'm going to put it over one. And so now I have three over one, and I want to change this to a multiplication problem, which means I need to do the inverse of this. So it's going to be times four over three. I like to cross multiply because it means I don't have to worry about simplifying in the end. So three can go into itself. Three goes into itself one time, and three goes into three one time. So now when I'm multiplying straight across, I get four over one which is the same thing as saying 4 is a whole number. So for the rest of the problems, you can work on your own, work with a group, or work with myself. You can choose one of the three ways um, that works best for you, using the reciprocal or the number line. If you want to use the fraction tiles, you're more than welcome to do so. They're in the front of the room. All right, good luck.